You guys don't know anything different. You've never known anything different. You've had availability to food unheard of in any generation at any time, anywhere. You have kiwis, and by the way, when you do this with great forests, you say, where's kiwi? And they say, well, it's from British Columbia, or they say it's from Africa. And I like doing this one, because kiwis are from New Zealand, and that's where we get it. But most people don't know. We had to adapt up here. So we have an Ontario variety of kiwi, and it's growing up in Barry. A buddy of mine grows it up. But we've had to adapt to your needs. We can't predict. The marsh guys are growing more Asian crops because the demographic here in the city is changing. The demographic down in the U.S. is changing as well. So we've had to adapt to different cultures and make sure that they understand that when they come over here, cultures do like comfort foods. There are certain comfort foods that they enjoy, bok choy for one. That's very much a comfort food. But if you don't grow it, they have to import it. And if you have to import it, then you're not sure what the hell you're doing with it anyways. Next. Number three, Mother Nature, the environment. I am not one that goes around saying chicken littles thing. I'm not a global warmist, I'm not anything. I'm a guy that says, you know what? We do have issues. Mother Nature has a, 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 a lot of fun dealing with us. We've had tornadoes in the marsh even though we shouldn't. We have our own microclimate in the marsh because of the black soil. That's true, those are things that we deal with. That was, by the way, a thunderstorm that came ripping through and dashed about, I think, four inches of rain in the space of an hour on us. Uh, last week, when was it? Wednesday or Thursday? When we just got the living snot kicked out of us, 75 millimeters of rain in four hours. Uh, my guys were joking that they shouldn't have planted, they should put rice in. Because the marsh is that wet and it always absorbs. Mother Nature is going to come back and get you guys. Not me, because I'm going to be old and I'm done and it doesn't matter. It's going to come back and get you. She's going to sigh and go, enough. And we're already seeing this. We're seeing drought conditions in places we've never seen before. We're seeing horrendous droughts in California and Texas where they have no access to water. By the way, that's where all your fresh produce comes from, from the majority. California just had to cut a $217 million deal with farmers last month for water irrigation because they have no irrigation because the Sierra is dry. You have countries around the world that you can't identify where water is a severe issue. We have access to water, but we also have severe weather conditions. I'm not a global warmer. I'm not an environmental adjunct anything. I'm not somebody that's apocalyptic. I just know that this is stuff that's changing out here. And farmers have to adapt to Mother Nature. I would defy anybody in their right mind if they knew there was a one in four chance that every time you stepped out of the job, or stepped out of your house to go to your job, a one in four chance that everything you've done has been obliterated, you wouldn't do it. That's insanity. Ask the apple guys. 80% of Ontario's apple crop, by the way, gone. It was because of Mother Nature. Because March rolled the dice and says, hey, let's get rid of winter, and we'll come in with 22 degree weather. And by the way, we'll let the trees all bud, and then we're going to freeze it for a little bit. And then we're going to let it warm up. And then we're going to freeze it again. And finally, one more time, we'll let it warm up and freeze. 80% of the apple buds are gone. Tender fruit is, I'd say, 65%. Uh, the grapes, the vines have huge issues. These are conditions we deal with year in and year out. Rules and regs. This is where Rod and I always have fun. I represent the Holland Marsh. It is the most heavily regulated piece of land in all of Ontario. Actually, I probably beg her to say it's the most heavily regulated in Canada. In no particular order, I deal with this. Five municipalities, one region, one county, two conservation authorities, 20 provincial ministries, 14 federal ministries, 27, soon to be 28 major pieces of legislation, 119 rules and regulations. Would you like my job? When I was emailing people, that was because I was dealing with the MOE, thorn in my side, because we have a government that's contradictory in what they do. But I deal with it, because you can find ways to deal with this stuff. You have to position it in front. But everything that we've geared this towards makes it that much more difficult for what we do up there, which is grow food for you. This, by the way, is part of my issue. Water is a huge issue. We have access to water everywhere. We could no longer afford not to look at water. 
But I will tell you this, we get grief because it's Lake Simcoe. We get grief now, the next major piece of legislation, in case you're not aware, is the Great Lakes Protection Plan, which the Ontario government is going to put in. God love them. But that's going to cause me more grief. Water is not an issue where we farm. We have canals. And everybody comes up and says, oh, aren't you going to drain the canals? I can no more drain the canals than I can drain Lake Simcoe. And all the water drops down, feeds the crops, goes up top, rains, comes back down, and we all have water. That's how the system works. We work within a natural system to start with. Our rules and regs are not about killing off property or land or anything else. We're about this. I will say one thing, Rod, and I differ on, and it's fine with me. All right, can I do a pop quiz? I like this one. Pop quiz. How many in the room are firm believers that organics mean no spray? So please, just be honest. Hands up if you believe so. Nobody? You're all educated? This is great. You hesitated. <laughs> how many can tell me, because I interact here, how many can tell me how many regulatory systems are out there for organics around the world? Anybody? No? I don't want to. Right? How many around the world? 27 regulatory organic systems around the world. You would honestly think that we could kind of devise a way that we can look at it and say this. Because the one thing there was organic, the final. 100 years ago, it was organic. Everything that you did was organic. It didn't matter. So here's how offensive it gets. There's five regulatory systems in California. One federal, one state, three dependent on a growing area. They define themselves in whatever context is there. Rod was part of this. How many years did it take us to get an organic system here in Canada? Seven. Well, yeah, but you, you want to deal with that one. I laughed between the other stuff. Well, Rudy didn't even know what it was. Seven straight solid years where federal bureaucrats were working on it. Want to know what the one thing that impeded them on? Language. Biologique in Quebec, because we're bilingual. Biologique means biological here in Ontario. Organic means organic. We had problems with defining what it was. By the way, just so that you know, for all those that were really shy not to put their hands up, Organics doesn't mean no sprays. Organics means no synthetic sprays. You spray all kinds of stuff. Now before this, <laughs> before you see this, this is, by the way, water, so I'm not doing anything there. The favorite top three organic sprays in the United States are, anybody? Copper sulfite. It kills all the amphibians and the fish inside the water, because you're not allowed to have that on any organic systems. Number two is arsenic. By the way, both of those are heavy metals, just in case you missed it. And rank number 13 and 17 in Toronto water tests. Number three is nicotine. Nicotine's an organic spray. That's why you always want to smoke after a salad. <laughs> this is what you deal with. This is real life. So when you come back to me and ask questions as to why we can't do it, it's because yours, and here's my number one, is you. You're my biggest problem. Because <laughs> you all have a little bit of knowledge, but you don't have a vast bit of knowledge. You all come in with your own concepts and preconcepts and preconceived concepts that you've read on the internet. God love you for that. You can be my greatest champions. You can also be my greatest pains in the ass. That's the problem. You take a little bit of knowledge and you move it forward. That's fantastic. You guys are here to learn. Hopefully you do. But at the end of the day, it's people that want to make a difference. What is that old line? The, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You're all the best of intentions. I'm dealing with the best of intentions with the Ontario government right now. I'm in hell. I play in hell every day. Just so you know, I do play with all these ministries. I don't just play with OMAFRA. I play with all these ministries. Because hell has a big abound that knows no limit the kind of grief that can go on to a farmer who at some point is just going to say enough. And that's what's happening out there is all the farmers that grow your food, they're all leaving because they've had enough. Be the champions that you can be by learning everything that you can do. That's all I'm asking from your group because you guys are the educated and you guys can bring it forward. That's it.